never an end road. Follow the road. It will lead you somewhere. So don't give up. Who is laughing at you? Your waiting time is not your wasting time. Tell them. Don't ever forget this. If you are not born again, you will suffer again. But if you are born again, get ready to reign again. Revelation chapter 3, verse 7 and 8, and I read, And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, This thing said he that is holy, he that is true, he that had the key of David, he that opened and no man shut it, and shut it and no man opened it. And let us read verse 8 together, everybody. One, two, go. I know thy works, and behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and has kept my word, and has not denied my name. And has denied my name. The scripture we read, it said to the angel of the church in Philadelphia. Now when he's talking about the church, the angel, don't forget, he's writing to the pastor, and of course, through the pastor, writing to the congregation in Philadelphia. And it says, he that had the key of David. Note it. He that had the key of David. Who is he talking about? He's talking about Jesus. And now, don't forget, the key of David was not only in Jesus' hand. He also said, I have given unto you what? The keys of the kingdom. It means that the door is open. You have the key. I have set. I am not setting. I have set. I have set past tense. Before you came, before you were born, before your mother and father met in the market square, before they said, I love you and I love you, and before they consented to live together, I have set before thee an open door. Before you became blood and water in your mother's womb, I have set before thee an open door. And he put it there, and no man can shut. Then, how is it that it's not everybody that is succeeding? Are you all with me here this morning? How is it that it's not everybody that has access to joy? If he says, I open the door, no man can shut. How is it that many look as if they have not entered their door? Some of you are here listening to me now. You can't say this is the last time that you had what you call peace. Some of you, you are here right now. You realize that you had a job. It look as if the door is shut. Some of you, financially, it's a zero level. Some of you, maritally, things are not just working the way you want. Oh, let me talk again. Your health. Some of you, your health. Everything look good around, but there's a particular area of your life that you wanted God to heal. And yet, the Bible says, I set before thee, open door. So when we're talking about open door it's holistically. It talks about the health. It talks about prosperity. It talks about peace. It talks about joy. It talks about righteousness. All these things are what is inside the door. But hear me now. Is it everyone that have access to those things? Certainly no. If you are here today, shout I hear you. So join me on this journey as we exploit it a little bit. Look at Peter for instance. The Bible says he fished all night. Luke chapter 5. He caught nothing. And yet, we are here. I said before the an open door. How come he caught nothing? I can tell you why. He caught nothing because Jesus had not stepped into his boat. So, I began to rank zeros the reasons why people don't step into their door. That takes me again to the book of Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. Verse 20, he says, I stand and I knock. Watch it. Behold, I stand at the door. Keywords here. Revelation 23 verse 20. I stand at the door. So, what we do is, we keep him standing. I stand at the door. Hey, let me say this here. I hope you know it is frustrating for you to get an, to an office and they are not opening the door for you. You, ask, you want to see the director. And the secretary tells you, you can't see him. Say what? He says he's inside. But I want to see him. He says you can't see him. Can I enter to sit down? No, you can't sit down. Why? Because I am not permitted to open the door. And you stand outside. 
I hope you know it is frustrating. Talk to me now. That is what many of us have done with Jesus. Jesus is standing outside. He stands. Pastor, where is he in my door? He's at the door of your heart. The door of your heart. Your heart is the open door to anywhere in life. In this heart, man can fly. With this heart, man can crawl. With this heart, man can walk. With this heart, man can run. With this heart, man can soar higher. Any place you get to in life, your heart get there first. Did you get what I'm saying here? Your heart is your height. How? Look at a short man. The Bible calling him Zacchaeus. The Bible say he was a short man. He was a tax collector. This man noticed that I have money. I have everything. But I don't have peace. I don't have joy. What do I do to make have this thing? And the Bible said he wanted to see Jesus. Because he was too short. So because anywhere Jesus is, there's crowd. There's always crowd. And the man is so short that he can't even see Jesus. So one day, he said to himself, if I cannot see Jesus, Jesus must see me. Am I communicating? With his heart, he calculated his, he balanced his equation. With his heart, something told him there is a sycamore tree you can climb. And guess what? He located the sycamore tree. He damn what men will say. You know what it is for a rich man in your area to be climbing guava tree. Talk to me here. You see a very rich man. A hello. Or a prominent person. Or a famous person. Okay. Look at me now. Maybe I just got to your area. They say, who climb up? Say, see pastor for all. What did they do? He said, one blood guava. Some of you will snap tire with your phone. Pastor climbing guava tree in my street. Talk to me here. You don't pay time for Facebook immediately. You know what I'm talking about. So he said, I set before thee an open door. Guess what? No man can shut. Hear me now. No witch can shut your door. No babalawo can shut your door. If it's not there that open it, they cannot shut it. If they can only shut it, if not they open them. Are you sure you're hearing me now? Oh, Donnie did not open your door. Native doctor did not open your door. Oh, Kotick did not open your door. As my heart is lifted up today, your door will never be shut. Hear me? Don't be afraid. Pastor, I don't know how my head is doing me. They can't shut your health. They didn't give you your health. The breath in your nursery, nobody can calculate how you enter. The blood that is flowing through you is not given to you by man. This blood enter. God puts it there so your blood cannot dry up. I don't know who you are here. If you go back for that test, there will be overflow. Lift up your hand, shout a better amen. So ladies and gentlemen, I said before the and open door, no man can shut, but you can shut it. What that say? You, 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 you can use your hand to shut it. Set before thee and open door. No man can show how. I give unto you the keys of the kingdom. So what do you do with the key? You use key to either lock or open. Because the key is in your hand. The key of your sound health is in your hand. The key of your life is in your hand. Let's rank zero sit now. God gave you health. He gave you a way to do and not to do. Praise God. And you decide to mess up your life. And you decide to say, it's my life. And you go around having illicit sex. You go around having all kinds of things. Ladies and gentlemen, let me explain one thing to you. If you escape STD1, you can't escape STD2. Did you understand what I'm saying here? Uh, let me please that side. Pastor, you don't understand. I know what I'm saying. There's STD1 and to STD2 is the sexually transmitted demon. If you escape the disease, you can't escape the STD1, STD2. If you are here this morning, shout, I hear you. Let, let, me, let, let, me, let, me, let me go a little bit deeper. So, ladies and gentlemen, God opened the door of your health. But your health needs some maintenance. Your health it's not everything you eat. It's not everything that comes into you. You have to titrate. You have to check. It's not everything because it's food that enters you. Are you all following what I'm saying here? Now, when you begin to eat junk food, begin to eat anything, what are you doing? You are using your hand to shock your health. God has opened the door of sound health. But with your hand, you are locking it. 
the loudest amen your door will never be shut and so what i mean is keep it open when god opens this door we have our part to play we have our part to play when god begins to prosper you he's not prospering you because of you when god gives you sound health he's not giving you sound health just because of you in every area of our life god has a stake God have a stake. The thing that make me fear so much in the Bible, I said it this morning, is the story of Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar was not just, he was not a very righteous king. In fact, he belonged to an unbeliever nation, or unbelieving nation called Babylon. And guess what? God blessed him. God lifted him up. God put nation in his hand and he began to ascribe glory to himself. He began to say, this is the glory I have done. This is this. I am this because I'm that. I'm doing. God say, Ah, Nebuchadnezzar, look at you, you fool. God call him fool. Nebuchadnezzar went to bed as a human being. He woke up as an animal. Oh, how did I know? Because he was eating grass for seven and a half years. He was banished into the bush. Praise the Lord. His throne was removed. I don't know what happened to his wives. Praise God and children for seven and a half years. For seven and a half years, he was not in control until he gave glory back to God. He was restored. Today, God is restoring somebody. How many of you remember the story of Esther? Esther was a slave girl who never, ever, ever, should never, ever get close to the place of being blessed. Why? Because she has been taken from her home. How? She's a slave in a land that is not hers. How? She's not connected at all. The only connection she had was a gate man called Mordecai, the uncle. And But this uncle was at the king's gates at the king's gate one day the queen in the throne also misbehaved the queen forgot that is the king who gave her the crown and so the king said to the queen queen come out let people see my crown he said i don't feel like coming and the king said well sorry that is where your queenship ends here and they took her crown from her and they began to look for a lady to give it to they began to look for a lady to give it to the uncle heard about it allow Esther to go into the contest despite she was not a citizen normally that contest was for citizens she was from Israel despite she was not a Babylonian guess what she won the the contest she eventually became the queen everything was right Esther became the reigning one of the day everyone is talking about Esther Esther is now wearing the crown everything in Esther is now repaired ladies and gentlemen the door opened for esther esther is now in the palace enjoying her life but one thing happened the church the uncle represent the church Mordecai. the church sent and said esther are you aware that there's a power that want to annihilate the church there's a power we need your help we need you to go to the king for us guess what esther said esther sent message back to the uncle that is in esther chapter 4 he said tell my uncle that it is not my turn to go in praise the lord it's not my turn to go in uh -huh. it was my turn that's how they made me queen but now it's not my turn to go in because in this palace the king has so many wives and none of us must appear before the king until a scepter is released and we touch it then we can come but sir tell my uncle it's not my turn to go in in other words, there's a protocol in the palace. Ladies and gentlemen, if God was to observe protocol, Esther, you will not be the queen. Some of us here, if God is to observe protocol, we will not be where we are. Because there are more smarter people. There are more intelligent people. Am I communicating here? So, Esther, now that God needed to break protocol to make her queen, she's not saying, well, I'm observing protocol. I thank God. The uncle Mordecai is like me. Praise God. You know what the uncle said? He said, go and tell Esther. <laughs> ah, ah, don't worry. If you're not here, God go send. I gave you an opportunity. But if you miss it, look at it. Esther chapter 4 verse 14. He said, for thou, if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall there be enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who know it whether thou art come to the kingdom such a time as this do you know whether god give you this thing such a time as this 
that's one fear that's one thing that make me afraid because once upon a time God will raise somebody because of something in such no, he didn't say he raised he said in such a time as this as this so when Esther heard the message guess what Esther did Esther took presidential clothes presidential rice presidential envelope probably stuffed with money and said go and give my uncle Mordecai has sent it back and said come this is not what we need now this one when Esther saw it Esther said to the people that came go and tell my uncle that he should fast me and the maiden in the palace we will fast also here that takes me to the next level if your door must be open learn to fast sometimes don't be too big to fast don't be too rich to fast because the higher you go the more enemy you attract as you are going up there are people whose assignment is to bring you down they never want somebody to lift up his head in your family but as my hand is lifted up I declare your door will never be shut sit down hear me child of God Esther said go and fast she didn't end there she said I and my maiden also we will fast and she said something and I will go in unto the king the next word she said if I perish that's the key word praise God if I perish, I perish. And that's what she wanted to miss. Esther, can I tell you, Esther's door to the palace would have been shut. You'll be, you'll be amazed that a law can come up that night. They will probe Esther's background. Somebody will just raise emotion. We suspect there's somebody in here that this queen in subsection so so and so of the criminal code of 1978 we have already agreed that nobody from a foreign land must be a queen in Babylon but we have investigated to discover that Queen Esther is not an, a Babylonian she's an Israelite listen they will set up a panel are you sure you're hearing me the panel will discover that Esther is not a Babylonian and can, can I tell you that death will happen to her she would have died. That means her door is shut. What am I trying to let us understand is that God is still opening doors, but we have our part to play. Why did Queen Vesti lost her crown? Because she did not use the door to glorify the king. Jesus is still our king of kings. Are you all hearing me now? So the crown was transferred to someone else. Esther O was also going to be transferred. Her own case would have even been worse. Not only would they have been transferred, she would have been annihilated. She would have been killed because your uncle already prophesied it. But this lady chose to. You know what? After Esther fasted, next thing she did was to make sacrifice. Something for the king to eat. And the king finished eating. And the king said, Esther, tell me, what is your request? Praise God. What is your request? You can see more door got open for her. Ladies and gentlemen, there's always a part we need to play. One of the major points that can make your door to be open, learn to forgive people. What did I say? Whether they are from your family, whether they are from your household, whether they are in church, forgive them unconditionally. If you don't forgive people, you are holding down your progress. If you don't forgive the people, you are shutting your door. The last time we prayed, they said Jesus had to pray. He said, Our Father who art in heaven, and He goes for that. Forgive us as we forgive those who trespass against us. Your door can never be open if you don't forgive. Hey, madam, forgive your husband unconditionally. Oh God, forgive your wife unconditionally. You, brother, sister in church, Luke 13, 24 to 30. I want us to quickly read through it and look at the danger of our serving God and not standing right strive to enter in at the straight gate for many I say unto you we seek to enter in and shall not be able verse 25 down once the master of the house rises up and has shut the door and ye begin to stand without and knock at the door say Lord Lord open unto us and he shall answer unto you I know you not where 
ye are. Go ahead. Then shall ye begin to say, We have eaten and drunk in thy presence. We don't sing for choir, chop, even food. Go. And as what? Thoughts done evangelism in the streets. 27 to 30. Go ahead. But he shall say, I tell you, I know you not where ye are. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. Continue. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth when ye shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God. And ye yourself trust out. 29 and 30. Go ahead. They shall come from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south and shall sit down in the kingdom of God. 30 finally. And behold, and behold, there are last we shall be first, and there are first we shall be last. What is that scripture saying? It's not how long you enter church, it's how you continue with God. People are coming that you are laughing at today. That's why he's telling you they may enter heaven before you. I pray for you, you will not be cast out. So it means Christianity is not just our coming, jumping, forgetting to live in the will of God. Live in the will of God, knowing fully well that our salvation on earth is not in vain. Are you all hearing what I'm saying? Christianity has a destination, and you have to fight. And hold on. If it's someone that will stop you from entering, please forgive the person. Let it go. Let it go. Humble yourself. If you go, the person reject, get somebody to go with you. If you go, they reject, get another person. Then if the person will refuse, then we cast the person as an enemy. Then you know you have freed yourself. If you are here today, shout hallelujah. So forgive unconditionally. What did I say? Number two, use what you have to glorify God. If you have sound health, use it to glorify God. If you have money, use it to glorify God. Your job, the job you have, the business you are doing, have a function. Make sure you glorify God. Wow, I know you've been richly blessed by this message you have heard. Now, I want you to take quality decision this year to serve him better. Now, this is what you do. In case you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, I want you to say with me, say, Jesus, I come to you today. I am a sinner. Have mercy on me. From now onward, I choose to serve you all the days of my life. Thank you, Lord, for accepting me. And if you have said that prayer, I welcome you to the family, and I can now declare that you are born again, and I command all things to pass away. I bless you with favor. It is well with you when you go out. It is well when you come in. Arise and shine. In Jesus' name, amen. Divine Appointment Ministry International presents Going Down the Wall of Jericho every Tuesday, 6.30 a.m. to 7.45 a.m. Come and change your situation for good with prayers. Ministering is the Jesus soldier, Reverend Ben Erabai. And the enemy we say, if the enemy can say, you can say, Hey, child of God, fight your battle on your knees. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Go on your knees and arrest the arrester. Pursue your pursuer. Bind the bindable. Lose the losable. Are you sure you are hearing me? Don't let them have the last say. Pulling down your wall of Jericho, nothing is impossible. Every mountain in your life shall be plain. Sicknesses and diseases shall be no more. The barren shall bear fruits. Witches and wizards shall lose their stronghold. Venue is Divine Appointment Ministry International Number 17 Ojewala Street of Shillon Street. From Group Bus Stop in Lukadu, Lagos. Pulling down your wall of Jericho, that wall must fall. Because prayers can change everything. Jesus is Lord.